Hi guys, um, welcome back to another house plant video. Today we're going to do some plant tours around here. I haven't watered my plants for two weeks now, so they really do need some attention. We will also be cleaning the monstera behind me. Um, I was thinking of repotting it the other day and um, I saw some thrips on some of the new leaves. Um, obviously, I've waved them down with some hand sanitizer, but I haven't checked the rest of the plant. So um, we'll be doing that today. Um, I have been dealing with thrips for half a year now, I think. Um, so I think <laughs> I have some knowledge on how to deal with thrips and how to clean them. Obviously, they always come back, um, especially during the warmer season. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how I do it um, and I hope this will be a helpful video. So, let's get started. So this is my quantum, um, if you remember from my previous video. Um, this is how the plant looks like when it needs waters. Um, so I watered this uh, on the 16th of August and today is, is the 16th of September already, so it has been a month. Uh, normally, if I look at my watering schedule, normally I would water it every two weeks, uh, but because I have been so busy with everything else, um, so as I was passing by the living room, I saw this and I realized I actually need to do some plant chores around here. So my plant needs some attention, obviously, so. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to put this in the container right here and go to so If I accidentally leave the plant to dry to this extreme, I would just use my finger and tease um, the soy on top so the water can go through. I would just water it normally, so you can see there's like excess water at the bottom. Uh, but obviously, this plant is extremely dry, so the plant will soak up the rest of the water by itself. Um, it just needs a little bit more time. So I would leave this in here for about like an hour or two, um, and then I will fertilize it. Um, and then I will leave it in here for another half an hour. Um, I know it's a lot of work, I don't normally leave my plant to this um, extreme, um, but I guess sometimes you do forget about your plants because you have so many other things um, in going on in your life. Um, so it is normal to buy more plants, I guess. So, <laughs> my camera died yesterday and I didn't realize that the battery was um, was low so we'll continue the plant tour today and hopefully i'll get it done by the end of today um yeah so, so um i'll show you guys what i've done yesterday after my camera died um so i watered my english iv and i left the plant in the container with water overnight so if you can see this is where the water was the water level was um, and um, the plant have drank quite a lot overnight. I only do this during summer, um, I wouldn't recommend doing this during winter. Um, maybe leave the plant in a little bit less, uh, could be like an hour or two. Um, I wouldn't recommend to leave it overnight because uh, during winter the plant doesn't receive that much light so it doesn't really need that much water either. So uh, we will start to water some of my plants today um, and the first one would be the pothos right here. Um, if you watched my previous video, uh, you know that this is the, the pothos in my bedroom next to the north facing window. It came, I bought it in a 15 centimeter pot and I remember chopping all those, like all these notes um and then propagating them and I, at the beginning i barely filled up the pot um i don't know if you can see 
this right here. Um, I barely filled up the pot. I think I filled, I filled up one fourth, like a quarter of the pot at the beginning. Um, and then I fill up half of the pot with my first round of propagation. And then the moment they grow like some note, um, I would propagate them right away. And then I fill the rest of the pot with the second round, I think. Um, and now I'm thinking of propagating this again as well to make it like fall and brushier. Um, so I put this in at the beginning. I was, I wanted to one of those, you know, that climb up the pole. But obviously this one doesn't have stagnant moss or anything in it. Um, so the pond actually didn't use it. Um, I tried to tie up, tie some of the notes up here so it can climb up. But um, I don't think it's the plants like the pole without second moss, so I will change it um, when I repot this one or when I buy uh, like all the equipment to make second moss, I will change it. But for now, it's just staying here. So we are going to water this in my um, bathroom. I realized I don't have any space for my tripod, so I will do that off camera. Um, and I will show you how the plants look like after being watered. As you can see, these are very uh, drippy, as you can see them. Um, and the leaves feel very thin as well. Um, and I'll show you how different it will look um, after being watered. The plant is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's almost as big as me. And um, you can see it has some yellow leaf here um, from being underwater. Obviously, not a very good plant, moms. Here's I mean, it happens, you know. I will water this in the shower and I will show you how it looks like after being watered. Well, I forgot to show you guys um, how the plants look like, the correction from yesterday that I watered. Um, I didn't realize until after I watered the plant. Um, this is a new leaf. You can see how it comes up. So this is a no, this is a new leaf, and this is also a new leaf. Um, I don't know if you can see. I'm blocking your lights. Am I? Oh my gosh! So bad at this. Uh, okay, here's a better angle. So uh, this one right here, and this one right here, uh, they choose are the new leaf. Um, this is the old one. I mean, I don't know if you can see the size difference between this one and this one. Um, it has grown quite a lot. Uh, I really love this plant actually. I actually didn't like this plant at the beginning because of the color red that it has on the leaf, but um, I mean, I'm not mad at the green cotton. It looks absolutely beautiful to me. Look at the side of this leaf. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, like you have those like plant mom moments that you're so proud of yourself. Um, this is one of them. <laughs> I love seeing new growth, but because I own quite many plants, um, I don't really see new growth very often until like I have to water them to make my day. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys this. So next we're going to water all of the plants that right next to the south facing window in my kitchen. Um, we'll do it very quick because I will put all of them in like the container like this um, water them all and leave them so we can do some other plant chores around here
So um, sometime when the soil is very dry, I would just use my finger or some of my plant. I actually leave some of the wooden um, pick, um, wooden stick, uh, and just poke down the soil like this so the water can go through properly, like go through the middle of the plant instead of going to the edges of the, between the soil and the pot uh, this way. And you can create, you also create like air in the soil as well. And um, it is good for the plants because then um, you will avoid root rot that way. So um, I also buy these plates. Uh, I don't know if you can see this one right here from IKEA. It's actually very cheap. Um, they are 50p per plate and I find it very convenient every time I go to IKEA to buy plant I would buy um, at least five of these um, it's easier for me actually I think it's cheaper as well than the plastic one and I also collect the like the top of the old container like this as um, a plant stand plant plate um, because some of them they I have some of the tiny plant and obviously the IKEA plate is way too big so uh, it would take me an hour to just go to B&Q which is on the other side of the city um, to just buy the same plastic looking plant plate I still have the plastic plant plate um, I can show you one here I have one right here um, if I go to B&Q I would um, buy some of them but um, I think I stopped buying these already because I have so many of the IKEA plates and I also be using some of the plastic one from food container Um, so now I will show you how I make my um, fertilizer. So this right here, I think, is one liter of water, um, and I use this fertilizers right here. This is not organic fertilizers, and I think the NPK for this is seven three five. Um, I wouldn't say this is a balanced fertilizers. I mean, this is the closest to balanced fertilizers that I could find. Um, and it works for my plants. So, yeah, as you can see, I already um, almost used up the bottle. Um, I don't think I will be buying more of this because winter is coming and I don't think my plant need fertilizer during winter. So. So one liter of water and I think um, half the cap. Just gonna And I would use my wooden pick and just mix it up.
so I would mix my fertilizer and if I don't use it right away I will put my fertilizer in one of these um, glass container and I will I will use it as I go So I just realized that I have, I bought two new plants, um, this is a nerve plant, uh, I promise it look better when it's not this dramatic, um, <laughs> I know you shouldn't repot, I mean you shouldn't repot a plant that is uh, dry like this, um, but I have to do this so I will do it now and I will soak the plant in water I will show you a picture of how it looked like after being watered but for now I will repot this plant um, and I also bought this one um, this is actually, they, they both are very tiny um, this is a coffee plant um, yeah, so we'll be doing some of the repotting I didn't think that I would be doing a repotting video, but you can see right here. Yeah. So I uh, will be doing this. This is my old potting mix. Um, it's very dry, uh, but I will actually. Oh. So I put just a little bit of water in here. So, um, the soil is not too dusty for me to use. Um, I'm going to put some in here. This is not how I normally repot my plant, actually. I normally find at least five or six plants I need to repot and then I do it all at once. But the two plants are very tiny. So I thought I might just do this in today's video. I will be repotting these two in this. I don't know if you can see the size difference. Um, I think it's reasonable enough. So. Mm -hmm. so what I would do is to put some soy here first. Like this. Um, I actually bought these two in B&M. So I will show you how I take out the plant. Uh, with a small plant like this, you just squeeze the pot and kind of like wiggle them out of their comfort zone. Uh, so I bought these two from B&M. Mm, those of you who live in the UK, I'm pretty sure you know uh, the shop B&M. Normally they don't have, um, well, normally their plants are not in good condition. Um, the yeast are being uh, overwatered or underwatered. I actually got these two in a very good condition. Um, I'm just going to tease a root ball like this. Um, you can see the coffee plants have very fine, like very um, thin root system so I 
wouldn't recommend to just disturb the root so much. So I'm just gonna squeeze the root ball like this uh, and then just leave it back in the pot. So um, yeah, I got lucky with b and this time. The coffee plant actually belonged to my fiance. I, he had one coffee pot before from Ikea but then I left it under his care during the heat wave and um, as you can guess it died. Um, actually a very funny story because I came back from the holiday and his coffee plant was completely dried up. Like the leaf was very crispy um, but it was still green. Uh, but it was extremely crispy and I told him that he killed it and we need to throw the plant away but then he wanted to keep it a little bit longer because he said it's so green it might just bound back you know like magically bound back from being fried up in the heat I don't think so but <laughs> we kept the plant for I think a month and a half more um, Obviously, he was in denial stage, uh, but we ended up throwing it away because uh, it wasn't bouncing back at all. Um, so yeah, so the moment he saw this in B and M, he he wanted this right away. So we bought this one for him, and obviously because he bought a plant, I couldn't resist myself to buy myself a plant. Uh, so I bought myself the no plant. Uh, yeah. just gonna... So hopefully this one will live. So I will be repotting this in a similar size pot at the coffee plant. Uh, my collection is mostly common plants. Plants that you can easily find in Ikea or your local plant shop. Um, I'm not saying philodendron and alocasia is not easy to find in your local plant shop. Um, they just don't sell them as often, I think. Um, so I really want to order some. I really want to add more of those to my collection. They are beautiful. Um, I don't know if you can see. The root system of this is crazy. Um, yeah, I'll, I would use an unboxing video if I actually buy any of them. Um, I'm actually not quite sure what to add in my collection. I know that I want uh, philodendron or alocasia, but if you have any suggestions, please leave in the comments section below. I really want to hear any suggestion. Um, I'm actually new to alocasia because that would be helpful. I'm very curious. <laughs> or if you have any experience with the one that you have in the collection, please share. Um, <laughs> it's one healthy attempt. So I just okay. I just loosen up the the root at the bottom, and now I'm just gonna squeeze the pot like this, and then wiggle the plant out. So. And then you can see that the no plant roots are really fine as well. Um, so I wouldn't like I wouldn't tease it so much. So some tips that I pick up along the way. You can check the root system through like the bottom of the pot. Um, and you need to check the condition of your plants as well before you buy them. Um, and it best if you can see any kind of new growth coming out as well. Yeah, you can buy plant in that are not in the good condition in like discount price and treat them at home and put them in rehab or something. But um, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it if you're a beginner. It's a stressful. It's a very stressful process if you have never. I've never dealt with uh, pest because uh, it's happened to me and it was very stressful but now I think I could but it's just a lot of work so 
I avoid it as well. Okay, I repurpose this plant. So the next thing we're going to do is to clean my moisture. Um, I'm so sorry about the lighting, if it's not good. Uh, it's because um, it's 6 o'clock and it's getting dark, um, which is the perfect time to do the treatment. I wouldn't recommend you do this um, during the daytime because you might burn the leaf. But I will show you the products that I'm going to use in the process of how I clean my plants that have thrips. So I hope this is not too dark. Um, so I don't have the ring light and that's why. So the products that I will be using today to for the thrips is this one. Right here is a Captain Jack Dead Bug Brew. Um, I actually heard a lot of good review on this and I bought this I think half a year ago at around May when I first got my um, trips on my monster. Um it's the same one right here and it actually worked um, the trips went away um, and I have been spraying my plant with this but the problem with this treatment is that you have to spray it every three weeks um, just to get like all the life cycle trips but Somehow my plants still have some, so I have to do, I have to clean all my leaves manually anyway. Uh, but I will be spraying this because the trips infection of the Monstera is not that severe yet. Um, I was lucky to find it, I was lucky to find it in early stage. So we will go through um, all the leaves today. But first, uh, I'm going to check every single leaf to see if there are any thrips that are still crawling and I will be using I'll be using just like a normal hand sanitizer and some cotton pad and I will just I will just put something like this right here put some in here and then yeah Right them so I have two cotton pad um, one for the bottom one at the top when I wipe it off so what I'm going to do so what I'm going to do is um, I will use my phone and turn on the, um, the light so I will show you how to um, check for threads on your plant um, it's very easy it works with every single leaf uh, even with the calathea, I do do it with the calathea from time to time as well. So I would turn on the light from the phone. And what I would do is I put I put the light underneath the leaf uh, like this. If um, there are any like black dot crawling, that gonna be trips. So I would do that now. And yeah, before I I would do that now before I spray anything. Um, in case I don't um, knock them off the leaf and they will stay in the soil and then they're gonna crawl back up. So um, I have 
mix um, the solution in a spray bottle. So this is a 500 milliliter spray bottle. So I put one and a half teaspoon of the solution in here, um, and I'm going to spray the monstera and also the two plants behind it, just because they are so close to each other. Um, in case the bug kind of crouch on the other plant. And when I spray the monstera, so yeah, I'm just gonna spray both sides of the leaf and uh, stem, and um, I will show you. Um, the reason why I start noticing um, the trips on the monster as well by the end of this. Um, so yeah. I just finished spraying the plant and I'm going to pour the rest of this into the soy um, just to make sure Okay, so I want to show you guys what was the first sign of thrips that I saw on this monstera that make me um, want that make me want to check all the leaves to see if there are any so if you right here uh, between the note, um, you can see that the stem kind of um, it's kind of turning yellow right here. Obviously, a healthy plant will still produce like yellow leaf because um, those are the old one. But this one, the stem right here, is actually a new a new one. Um, this one came out I think a week ago. And I noticed that there's some yellowing in the stem. Um, that is one of the first signs um, that I normally look at. So if your pond is infested with thrips, normally um, the new growth um, will turn yellow, not the old one. So this is the golden pothos. Um, you can really see the difference between the before and after. Um, all the leaves perked up and it looks very nice. And this is the phytonia um, or nerve plant. Um, this is how it looks like after being watered. So I think this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching until the end of this video. Um, if you like this type of content and if you want me to make more planty video, please subscribe and leave a like button. Um, it means a lot to me. Uh, thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! guys um welcome back to another houseplant video um thank you so much for your support um with my pure